Hello, I'm Bill Nye. I'm a human. I'm Bill Nye. I'm a human. I'm Bill Nye. I'm a human. I'm a human too. I'm a human too. We're a human. Are we the only species around here? No, but we're the dominant one. You know, I'm getting kind of hungry. Me too. Why don't you eat another species? I don't see any other species. Oh, well, what about the grass? There's not enough biodiversity. Oh, biodiversity. That's it. There's not enough biodiversity. Hey, biodiversity. let's do a show. Bio biodiversity. biodiversity. Right. That's what I said. Okay. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Between where I'm standing and wherever you're sitting, there are millions of different types of plants and animals, millions of different species, all living together in an environment in something we call an ecosystem. Now, in order for an ecosystem to be successful, in order for it to be healthy, it has to have different kinds of plants and animals. Lots of different kinds of plants and animals. Something we call biodiversity. Now, biodiversity sounds kind of complicated, but if you listen, it also sounds kind of nice. This is the Earth, our world. All the living things that we know of live here, and they live in ecosystems. Places like tundras, taigas, savannas, grasslands, prairies, deserts, steppes, intertidal zones, subtidal zones, continental shelves, deep ocean zones, estuaries, deciduous forests, temperate rainforests, tropical rainforests, arctic ice packs, wetlands, marine mudflats, and cities. That's a lot of environments, but there are a lot of living things to fill them up. The Earth's environments are just crowded with life. Living things take hold everywhere they can. Here's an insect living right on top of blades of grass. It's a living thing that lives on other living things. See, environments always have living parts and non-living parts. Some animals live on top of plants. Some animals live in the water. Some plants grow on rocks. It's all part of the ecosystem. Nearly three quarters of the world's surface is covered with water. So most of the world's living things live here. It's just one ecosystem after another. Now, near as we can tell, all living things depend on other living things. So the more different kinds of living things in an ecosystem, the more successful it is. We call this biodiversity. Different kinds of life. We can think of an ecosystem as this wooden puzzle game. See all the different species? They all fit together, and they depend on each other to live. Now, you know, once in a while, a species will go extinct. It'll disappear from the ecosystem. And you can see how you could lose a few of those without too much trouble. But if you start to lose too many, the whole thing becomes becomes a little rickety. Now, where do people fit in? Well, look, they, they fit in just about everywhere. Look, just about anywhere you can walk, you'll find people living, because people are living things, and they're part of the ecosystem. So when we go to manage an ecosystem, we have to be careful about how things fit together, or there won't be a place for us. We have to be very careful. Extremely careful. Now, this hasn't happened yet, but it could. Ecosystems are a little bit like this game of sticks. You can't take one stick out without disturbing most of the other ones. The things that live in ecosystems depend on each other. They're connected. It's kind of cool. Want to help biodiversity in your own backyard? Build a bird shell. Here's what you do. Take a piece of wood that looks like this. Then cut four squares 
out of that wood so it looks like this. Then cut another piece of wood that looks like this. Get an adult to help you. Hello. Thank you. You're welcome. Now that you have your four squares, glue them together so they look like this. Now place this back on the wood, line it up, measure it off, and get the adult to help you again. Thank you. You're welcome. Glue the back on like this. And let it dry. And when that's dry, it should look like this. I glued the little piece on the front, and now I'm ready. Now nail your bird box to the side of a building or tree, uh, up high enough where nothing will mess with it. It's good to nail it to the northeast side. That way the little birds won't get too hot. Just nail it up there and the birds will do the rest. How we doing, Jafar? Okay, Bill, about 15 more minutes. 15 minutes, great. So this is an ecosystem. And so is this, and so is this. An ecosystem is made up of plants and animals that live together in an environment. You and I and every living thing are part of an environment. Now, environments will have non-living things, too, like uh, seawater, rock, sand, and silt. And in those non-living things will be living things, like fungus and soil, or uh, algae and water. Or maybe you're a species that lives in a meadow or in a tree. Anyway, it's important to realize how dependent plants and animals are on each other. You just don't seem to find one without the other. Living things in an ecosystem depend on other living things. We find if we take one thing out, it's connected to a whole bunch of other living things. So where does that leave our species? Where does that leave us? Just kidding. Sort of. So what we're going to be looking at today is biodiversity in a real small scale. Okay, out here in this sort of woodland area, we're going to be looking at biodiversity. People who don't have waterproof shoes on should walk over here on this edge. <laughs> you know, you can look at biodiversity within like a five foot strip of ground or within five miles or within five minutes, you know, in any kind of scale you want to look at. Look at them real carefully. See all the embryos down inside, all those little spots? Okay, those are eggs. There's raccoons out here, coyote, fox, black bears, deer, porcupines, all sorts of creatures are out here. One thing to remember when we're out here is how much everything is just attached to everything else. There's a saying that you can't pick a flower without jiggling a star. Well, out here, anything you look at, if you took one thing away from here, you would affect everything else that's out here. There's a whole long chain of things, and if you start taking out one piece of the chain, the whole chain falls apart. We, we have to remember that we're part of that whole chain of what's connected to each other. This is the edge where the environment without humans comes up against the environment with you. You know, humans introduce a lot of non-living things in the environment, but certain plants and animals do very well here because there's more sunlight for small plants and there's certain types of food that animals are able to find that they can't find easily other places. It just changes things when humans show up. It's a choice that we make. <laughs> Consider the following. We have animals, we have plants, but do we have an ecosystem? Well, this is a tricky one because the plants and animals on a farm don't depend on each other. Now here they depend on a farmer. Now we replace the, all the different kinds of plants and animals that were here and put just one species in a field or one type of animal in a pasture. We have corn, cows, chickens, and cotton and other things that don't begin with C like uh, yams. What? So does that mean that farms are terrible things and we should shut them all down? No, 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 because we're a species and we need to live too. Uh, we need 
farms the same way we need cars and trucks and buses. They're things that humans choose to build. Hey, would you guys knock it off? There's plenty of bugs, grass, and grain around here for everybody. Pretty soon, people will be working in this office park. And what happened to all the badgers, moss, mushroom, and sunflowers that used to be here? Well, there are not as many of them as there used to be. Does that mean we should all not go to work, move out of our houses, and camp out in the woods with badgers and sunflowers? Well, to some people, yes. But seeing as how you're sitting and watching TV, you're probably not one of them. And that's okay. It's just that we've got to be careful. Now, too much fertilizer on our lawns can end up running down streams and rivers, finds its way into ponds and lakes, fertilizing too many weeds, and that's a mess. You see, nature's problems are our problems. We're part of nature, for crying out loud. So when we look for places to farm, do business, live, or build schools, we should ask ourselves, do we really need to spread them out so much? Because whenever we do, we end up making the ecosystem less diverse. It happens every time. Well, thank you for considering the following. For the first time ever in one package, all the greatest hits from the plants and animals you love to love. And all for one incredibly low price. That's right. For just $19.95, you can have just, just one night by the Dodo Birds. I flew over the target, the target range, range, and the target the range won by the late great passenger pigeon. All closed up by the Samson Hardy Muscle. I mean, uh, Samson's Pearly Muscle. I need you so bad by the Badlands Bighorn Sheep. Now these species are no longer available, so the sounds have been recorded in their original styles by a garage band from Seattle. Hey, what do you want for 1995? Now this is a dead tree, but growing on it are moss and lichen. No dead tree, no place for the moss or the lichen to grow. See, they depend on the dead tree to live. Everything depends on everything else. That's what biodiversity is all about. See this fern? Uh-huh. Well, hanging on it is the spider web. No fern, no place for the spider to build her or his web. See, living things depend on other living things everywhere. Welcome to BSN, the Biodiversity Shopping Network. Hi, I'm Todd Diverse, and if you want to wipe out a species, you're tuned to the right channel, because here at BSN, we believe the best way to wipe out a species is to remove them from their natural environs. Now, all of these items are extremely rare, so if you don't see something, it's probably already extinct. But if you see something you like and you'd like to wipe it out, call the number at the bottom of your screen right now. You're next, bud. Oh, yeah, you. You're next. Come here. Oh! Oh! Want to go on a safari? All you need is a glass and a magnifier. Whoa! I can see all sorts of things. Big bugs, little bugs, even a baby snail. But if I want to see something else really up close, I use my microscope. Whoa! This pond has a lot of biodiversity. But don't just take my word for it. Go out and see for yourself. Science! That's a squirrel's nest. And those squirrels spend almost their whole lives living in a tree, another living thing. They live up high off the ground where other animals can't mess with them very easily. And this moss, it lives on a tree too. Another living thing. See, the trees are part of their environment. It takes all kinds to make a world. That's what biodiversity is all about. Talk to you later. Bye. That was my mom. 
We're in the largest ecosystem in the world. The sea. Under the water. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Two-thirds of all the species in the world live down here. Lots of fish and different types of plants. But you and I can't live here. Because we couldn't breathe. <laughs> right. Duh. Along, excuse me. Along with the very large organisms and plants, many, many tiny, tiny organisms are so small that you can't see them without a special instrument. Wanna check it out? Today we have some very rare items, starting with this lovely combination of calancho, stapelia, and some beautiful rabbit ear fern there. This would be a lovely addition to any home. And I believe the caller is there, is that right? Order pizza? Silence! Here's five things you can do to help promote biodiversity. One, recycle glass and paper from your household. Two, leave nature in nature. Don't bring stuff home from forests, tide pools, or deserts. You can look at it and admire it, just don't take it out of its natural place. Take a picture instead. Three, plant a tree. Better yet, plant two trees. Four, hiking or biking, stay on the trail so you don't disturb local plants and animals. Five, don't put oil, gas, solvents, or anything for that matter in storm drains. It wreaks havoc on the ecosystem and damages the environment. Here's way more things you can do. Go litter. Have your mom use cloth diapers on your younger brothers. Recycle aluminum. Set up a bird feeder. Make a bus. Clean a beach. Train. Fun. Wash your car on the lawn. Wash your boat with a scrub brush. Use finally safe salt. Expose the oil sand. Don't use too much insecticide. Don't overfill your lawn. Cool. Plant another tree. Be a friend. Tell your friends a lot. Don't tell your lawn too much. Don't tell your friends. Don't forget to This is a golf course. It's a big lawn. It's an ecosystem. It has all different types of plants and insects, and of course, the microorganisms we can't even see. And what keeps this looking the way it looks is people. That's right. If humans weren't here working on it all the time, it wouldn't look anything like it does right now. It would probably look more like this. There'd be a lot more diversity of life. Maintaining lawns is a choice our species makes. They're very rare and extremely precious to the North American ecosystem. So stay tuned to the the S. There are lots of living things all around us that you can't even see, like mold spores and bacteria. You can't see them, but they're really important. It's really easy to grow enough mold so that you can see it. Here's what you do. Take a teaspoon of water, put it in a plastic bag. Then, put in a slice of bread. Seal the bag, and wait. After three or four days, take a look. Don't open it, just look. All the really fuzzy stuff, that's mold. We breathe in mold spores all the time. The air is loaded with them. The most common colors of mold are black, blue, green, or tan maybe. Molds make penicillin and even soy sauce. I bet these bacteria were on my hands when I put the bread in the bag. Some bacteria make cuts infected. Some make yogurt. And these living things are all around us. Not bad for one slice of bread. The thing about most ecosystems is, the more diverse the species, the healthier the system. The only thing is, we can't tell what species we're going to need to survive. So we better take care of as many things as we can. See this planet? It's home to all of us. That's why we need to make it a nice place to live. Science! Science rules! That's a termite, and that's the tree that he needs to eat, that's two ways connected, organism. 
prisms entwined in relationships respected. And yet we choose species to lose. Think we'll make do with fewer kangaroos. More species makes diversity and ecosystems that we find succeed. And so we shouldn't append organisms on which we might depend. We may not comprehend the strings attached to lives that we end. We need fungi to survive and stay alive. Come on. Hummingbirds and cactus, bats and cats and trees. It's like a giant lattice, how we need all of these. Even manatees, even manatees. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. It's great having you around the ecosystem. In fact, it's great having everything in the ecosystem. But you know, as more and more species disappear, it's harder and harder to keep the ecosystem in balance because we don't know which species are needed to hold it all together. We gotta keep our bio diverse. We gotta be careful. Well, if you'll excuse me, I got some plants and animals to keep track of. See you around the ecosystem. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. The world is covered by water. So almost all of the world's living things live here. It's just one ecosystem after another. Uh, we call this... Oh, boy. Sorry. I'm going to really bang my shin. Sorry. Different kinds of life. Oh, boy. boy. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. It's great having an ecosystem. Sorry. And as we do, the ecosystem becomes more and more... But if you'd like, if you... I kind of bobbled the line there. Uh -huh. Now, this hasn't happened yet, but... Good. Boy, that was a really good one. Between where I'm standing and wherever you're sitting, there are about a million different types of plants and animals. That's right, millions of different species, all living together in an ecosystem in what we call... An environment. Right, you said Roy. I said Sorry, goofball. Has anybody?